All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you book, with my February 2016 update video for, you guessed it, February 2016. Woo! So yeah, as always with these uh, monthly update videos, I'm going to be going over some personal life stuff as well as youtube -y stuff. So, let's start off with the youtube -y stuff. And first up is Andy Cade. So as you guys may know, I recently relaunched my Let's Play channel called Andy Cade and it's been enjoying some really good success as of late. I'm really proud of how everything is turning out and the positive response of uh, my Let's Play channel. So for those of you who don't know, Andy Cade, like I said, is my Let's Play channel. <laughs> I'm dedicated to playing games. Uh, currently, I can only play Steam games since I don't have a uh, huge collection of um, like console games or you know, I still have some of my portable stuff, which I may end up playing at some point on Andy Cade, but for the most part, you know, I have to stick with uh, Steam games. But I am going to be, uh, you know, maybe getting some consoles in the future, but, you know, that's going to be maybe a couple months down the line. Not sure yet. <laughs> so in any event, um, Andy Cade is my Let's Play channel, like I said. I already said that like three times. The plan for the schedule is to release one new video a day, with one game played per week. And I've been kind of liking that schedule, but at the same time, I wonder if that's the um, ideal schedule for an up and coming Let's Play channel. Um, I know that when a lot of Let's Play channels start off, they just, you know, overload with content and stuff like that, but um, I don't really have the time to be doing something like that because Let's Plays do take a lot of time to edit, a lot more time than, you know, my regular videos do. So that has to be considered, especially since, you know, I'm also going uh, to college as well. So um, a lot of my time has to be invested in that, as well as a part-time job, which I'm working on right now. I don't, I don't currently have a part-time job at the time of this recording, but I'm looking to, to be gainfully employed by somebody in the very near future. So that also has to be considered with uh, recording schedules and stuff like that. So for now, I just want to stick with uh, one video a day and you know hopefully you know once it you know kicks off and I can afford to cut back on some hours and maybe a little bit during the summertime when my schedule's not so intense I could probably do a little more but for now you know this is pretty much all I can do. All that considered I am uh, looking for suggestions as far as you know maybe how to mix up the schedule a little bit maybe you know, instead of doing one game a week, maybe do two games, or maybe have like a, a random one-off, you know, I don't mind doing, you know, maybe putting in an extra episode or two throughout the week, just as like random one-offs or whatever. But um, I'm still, like I've been following the Let's Play scene for a while, but as far as actually like doing it yourself, it's a whole different ball game. So I'm still fairly new to the actual like doing it yourself Let's Play. So for those who are a little more experienced, I am, you know, more than welcoming suggestions for uh, upcoming episodes of Andy Cade and scheduling and all that kind of stuff. So, there you go. <laughs> and before we close out the whole Andy Cade thing, I am also looking for uh, suggestions for new games as well. And like I said, I currently only have Steam, so I, I can't get into the console side of the house just yet. Um, I, like I said, you know, I am looking to you know, maybe get like a used console or something like that in the future. But for now, I just have to stick with Steam games and then, you know, once I start getting some more money, start bringing some more money in, then I can invest in console games and stuff like that. So, like I said, any and all suggestions are welcome. So, you know, be sure to put them in the comments below in the booby boops either in this video or on my Andy K channel. And like I say in all my videos, I read all the comments and I read all the messages. So. There you go. <laughs> and also, um, if you've been tuning into my um, live streams that I've been doing lately, I'm working on a super secret project, which is going to be released uh, later on this month, uh, February 23rd to be exact. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So um, I can't discuss it in this video because I kind of want you guys to see it and have it be like a little bit of a surprise as far as what it is. But if you've been tuning into the live streams, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So be sure to tune into those live streams, just saying. <laughs> um, I'm going to try to uh, schedule them a bit better. It was just kind of a spontaneous just do it sort of thing last time. But I am working on, you know, maybe getting like a 
a live stream schedule set up for those editing videos as well. So, you know, stay tuned for that. And also stay tuned for the results of the Super Secret Project, which I should be finishing up here in the next couple days. Maybe doing a live stream or something like that in the near future. Maybe. Just a little, little, uh, little hint there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And speaking of editing videos, or editing live streams rather, um, <laughs> kind of gets into my next subject. I am going to be working on um, some how-to tutorials for doing uh, like basic editing and a lot of very basic um, things that I do with uh, Sony Vegas as well. So um, I haven't quite decided on the format of those yet. Um, it's still very much a uh, in the planning stages as far as uh, that project goes but do expect those videos to be coming out very soon maybe within the next uh, couple like next month or two I'd say so you know stay tuned for that and next up on YouTube news is another series that I've been wanting to do for a while and I've already mentioned this before on previous um, update vlogs is my um, sequel series to my very highly successful NFAX series where in that series I answered your uh, Navy Frequently Asked Questions, hence the name. <laughs> um, so the sequel series is going to be called Life, Life After Navy, or LAN, L-A-N. <laughs> so um, the plan with that series is, um, it was really inspired by a uh, fellow YouTuber and fellow Navy vet, uh, JT Suits. Um, I've been following his channel for a while, and really, I really dig his format, and you know, we've talked about, you know, YouTube things before, so, you know, I'm, a, I'm at a good rapport with him. And uh, I've been really looking into getting into that format of video for a while now. And I've, you know, even before then, when I was still in the Navy, I was thinking about bringing NFAX back, but uh, being stationed overseas in Japan, you know, my recording schedule was pretty tight. So, you know, I had a lot of stuff on my plate, you know, both demands for my job, as well as you know, doing the Andy Japandi series, doing unboxings, and a bunch of other stuff, and I just, I just couldn't, you know, fit the time into uh, making, you know, more NFAX videos. And honestly, like at the time, I didn't really even know what to talk about. You know, there was, there were some things that I wanted to talk about. You know, and I've already discussed them a little bit in my short-lived uh, co-podcast with my friend Bushido Devil Dog called the Dog and Squid Show, which uh, I tuned into. A couple of those episodes a while back while I was waiting for class and it's just like it kind of got me you know in that mindset again of you know doing NFAX and stuff like that so I thought I'd do an updated sequel series called Life, Life After Navy where I discuss um, a lot of issues that recently separated uh, recently transitioning veterans may face and you know how I dealt with those situations and I'm hoping to get uh, more vets onto the show to give a different perspective as well, but that's kind of long-term planning. You know, for the time being, I hope to uh, just talk about my experiences as a recently separated veteran. And, uh, you know, hopefully as I learn more about how things work on this side of the, of the house in the civilian sector, then I can kind of uh, give my perspective on that, give an updated perspective on that, maybe talk about like the GI Bill, um, various issues with transitioning, what to do before you transition, you know, stuff like that. So, less, you know, what's boot camp like kind of questions and more like, what's civilian life like? <laughs> so, I'm trading one frequently asked question for another, I guess. So, um, I'm really looking forward to doing that series and I hope to help out a lot of uh, transitioning vets with that series. So, stay tuned for that. And probably the biggest news on my channel um, thus far is the fact that I'm well moving <laughs> Moving this channel rather so um, as you guys know I've been doing the YouTube thing for going on 10 years now now It'll be 10 years exactly next month in March. So um, I figured as Just a way to kind of freshen things up and to get a nice clean start on YouTube again is to uh, transition everything over to my former alternate channel known as The Andy San. So youtube.com slash The Andy San is the channel that I'm gonna be moving to. And if you're already watching this video on that channel, greetings. <laughs> 
You are in the future now, my friend. But anyway, yeah, so I've been busy moving all of my back catalog, at least as much as I can, onto my The Andy San channel. And it's been kind of a slow process just because, um, well, <laughs> my upload speeds here in Michigan pale in comparison to uh, my speeds out in Japan. Now, downloading speeds are pretty on par for the most part, but uploading speeds, you know, it's, <laughs> in my opinion, fucking sweaty ass hot garbage. It's terrible. So it's been a very slow grinding process to get everything uploaded to that channel. And uh, I hope to have everything uploaded there by next month. But the way things are going, I might have some carryover time. So um, we'll see. But uh, the plan is to uh, basically um, have everything moved over by March. But you know, depending on schedule and uploading speeds, that may or may not happen. But I'll have the majority of my videos over there by then at least. <laughs> But um, starting March 1st, I'm going to be releasing all of my um, videos that I would be releasing on my Andy San channel on my The Andy San channel. So be sure to subscribe to my The Andy San channel so you guys um, have all the updates and everything like that and uh, stuff like that. And I'm going to be releasing, I think my last video on my Andy San channel is just going to be a big thank you video for you guys and also just kind of like a redirection video to be like hey thanks for subscribing to my channel but I actually moved to this other channel so be sure to check that out for new stuff you know whatever <laughs> starting March 1st I'm gonna be uploading all of you know like uh, vlogs update videos stuff like that on my the Andy San channel and then I'm gonna be gradually phasing out a lot of my old content that was formerly on my Andy San channel and it's going to be on my The Andy San channel. And uh, I'm just I'm basically just going to unlist all those videos. So if you have if you have them embedded elsewhere on the internet or if you have the original links or something like that, you can still watch them. You know, I have no problem with that. It's just I want to give um, exposure to the real uploaded videos so that way they get a chance to, you know, get some traffic and stuff like that. And like I said as far as, you know, how I plan on uh, dealing with the re-uploads is that um, starting March 1st, I'm going to be, like I said, phasing out all of my old videos on my Andy San channel, uh, basically putting like uh, an updated description on the re-uploads on my The Andy San channel, and then unlisting the videos progressively rather than just doing a huge <laughs> dump <laughs> of videos. So it'll be more of a gradual process, but that process is gonna be starting effective March 1st, 2016. Ooh, mark it on the calendars. And currently at this time, I don't plan on uh, updating the videos, the video links on my blog, you know, from my original uploads to my re-uploads, but that may be a future project. It just depends, like I said, on time and stuff like that. But at the time of this recording, I don't have any plans to do that. And the last little bit of YouTube news and stuff like that that I'm gonna be talking about in this video is uh, basically looking for suggestions from you guys. Um, I've been doing this for a while and you know, there are, there are times where I just kind of run out of stuff to talk about and run out of videos to do and things like that. And I'm just kind of like, I don't know. I want to YouTube, but I don't know what to YouTube about. <laughs> so I'm always open to suggestions from you guys as far as like new videos, maybe like a, a new uploading schedule either for, you know, my Andy San slash now the Andy San channel or my Andy K channel, something like that. So I'm, I'm always open to suggestions from you guys if you guys um, want me to play certain games, talk about certain things or whatever, you know, I'm more than happy to, uh, to look over the idea and see if, uh, if I can do it, so there's that. All right, and now moving on to the personal life section. So if you guys watched my uh, previous vlog, I was kind of in a very uh, depressed funk as of late. I still kind of am a little, little depressed, but I'm, you know, things are kind of turning around for me right now, so I'm a little bit more happy about uh, life in general <laughs> right now. So, I mean, if you couldn't tell by my jovial attitude. But yeah, things are starting to uh, turn around for me as far as, you know, getting a job and stuff like that. Although, um, I'm basically just submitting my application to more places, getting my resume retooled, and I might go into uh, more detail with this in like a Life After Navy video, 
but uh, just to kind of sum it up, like um, I was in the Navy for over five years, and a lot of my Navy experience, at least for my rate, doesn't exactly transfer over to a civilian job, unless it's like working for the government, like a federal job, or like being an ultrasound technician <laughs> or something like that, you know. So, you know, I'm trying to do something different with my uh, civilian career, you know, move over to the IT side of the house, because that was something I wanted to do even before I joined the Navy. So I want to transition to that, but because I don't have any like IT experience, you know, the most, you know, job-wise, the most IT experience I have is uh, working at a call center for about a month or two before they laid me off because of the economic downturn at the time. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> that was pre-Navy, so that was like six, seven years ago, I think now, maybe more. So, you know, I don't have a lot of current experience. In fact, I don't really have any as far as like, you know, working in the IT field. So I'm looking into, you know, maybe getting like a paid internship, kind of, you know, put some experience on my resume, looking for some, uh, or at least, you know, maybe some part-time work, just something to help me, you know, pay the bills and stuff like that. Cause um, the GI Bill only covers so much. And especially like if you're coming off of a winter or summer break or something like that, um, the first month is always going to be the hardest because you're not going to be in school for the full month. So that's the thing about the you know the post 9/11 GI Bill as far as um, getting the housing allowance. Because a lot of people, myself included, thought that you know they saw the the little number as far as you know what BAH is like in you know the town where your college is like, and they kind of you know see dollar signs and they're like, oh my god, I don't have to work a part time job. I don't have to do shit. I can just sit around, go to college, not have to worry about a dang old thing. And then uh, the bills start coming in and you realize how expensive food and all that kind of stuff is. And then, you know, it's like, mm, it's a bit of a reality check for most people. You know, and the savings start to dwindle. So basically I'm just looking for a, a small part-time gig just to help me cover some of the bills and stuff like that and to help so that way I'm not relying completely on the GI Bill, as far as like the BAH and stuff like that goes. And you know, I'm also looking for, you know, full-time work once summer rolls around because, you know, unless I'm taking summer classes, which is something that I am um, seriously considering, you know, depending on how the job market is, you know, in the future, um, I, you, you don't collect BAH if you're not in class. You know, in the summer months, you're pretty much on your own, unless you're taking summer classes, like I said. So I'm um, looking for you know, full-time employment or, you know, summer classes, but I still need that part-time employment. And like I said, you know, finding a job has been kind of stressful. Um, it's been, you know, just a very stressful experience for me because uh, the job market has changed a lot, you know, from when, before I joined the Navy to when I got out. And, you know, that's, you know, mostly positive, but, you know, there's some negatives, uh, negatives as well. Um, a, lot, a lot of the positives include like you don't have to you know physically fill out an application anymore because I absolutely hate actually like writing like physically writing something. Um, I prefer typing I'm a lot faster and you don't see so much crap you know in my typed writing. And also the submission process for applications is a lot easier it's a lot more efficient you just you know fill out the application, put in your work experience, do like a little questionnaire kind of dealio, and then you submit it, and there you go, your application's out there. So it's pretty easy. But the downside of all that is, is that doing this online application process, your application is dealt through either like an HR department, which may or may not even be part of the place where you're looking for employment. It may just be either like a separate HR department or like a corporate HR department or something like that. Before I joined the Navy, typically what I'd do in order to look for jobs is I would fill out an application, go turn it in in person, try to talk to a manager, you know, see what's going on, get some FaceTime so that way at least they can, you know, know that, hey, this is a real person actually applying for this job and maybe I can kind of get a feel for the company a little bit. 
you know, like I said, get some face time with the manager. That's always a good thing. And then, you know, wait a week, and then once a week went by, just constantly call in, you know, if they haven't called in already. You know, just asking, hey, you know, I'm just calling in about my application, wondering if you guys are hiring, or, so, you know, just something like that. Just to know that you're still interested in employment with them. And now, because it's all done with a, either a third party, or like a second party um, HR department, uh, it's all very hands-off. So, you know, the managers at the places I'm applying for have little to no uh, say as far as who gets hired and who doesn't. It's all very much in the hands of corporate and the HR department and whatever else, whatever employment agencies that they use. And the thing is, like, I don't have any contact info for even those HR departments, so I can't even talk to them about employment. You know, I, I had uh, tried to contact a certain big-name department store. I'm not going to go into names. And uh, so I called them up and asked, you know, hey, you guys still hiring? I'm just checking in on my application. I'm still, you know, interested in, uh, you know, getting a job with you guys. Now, not my exact words, but the basic gist of it. And uh, they redirected me to a uh, their employment, you know, center, their HR center, whatever, quote unquote. <laughs> and uh, it basically was an automated voicemail message saying, you know, in order to apply for such and such store, which I won't name, and uh, you have to, you know, it basically just goes through the whole steps of how to apply online, you know, fill out the form. You submit it, and then such and such, and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, oh, I already submitted it, so I'm just going to kind of wait for it to get to the part where it's like, if you've already submitted your thing, you know, maybe talk to an operator or check on the status of your uh, application. And then when it finally got to that point, it's like, if you've already applied, then uh, there's no need to contact us. We'll contact you. Goodbye. Click. And it was just such a slap in the face to me as far as like, you know, I'm trying to, you know, establish a more personal connection with the place I'm applying to and, you know, try to, you know, if they have any questions about my application because, you know, being a veteran, a lot of uh, your military experience is kind of just gobbledygook in the minds of, you know, most civilians who don't know what the heck you're talking about, to be honest. And even like, if your employer is a former, is a vet, you know, they may not know all about, you know, every single rate or MOS, you know, for non-Navy people. So, you know, it's, it, it would behoove you to explain it and to civilianify it, put it in civilianese, as I like to say. And even then, like, um, I would focus more on um, soft skills versus hard skills because, you know, a lot of the hard skills, which is what I actually did as a sonar tech doesn't really apply out in the real world unless I'm working for, you know, maybe Raytheon or Prodigy or, you know, Lockheed Martin or something like that. that those are the only companies really is where my expertise as a sonar tech would come into play as far as hard skills go. But soft skills, you know, like leadership, organization, discipline, uh, stuff like that those would come into play more on the civilian side of the house, and as well as those two, but, you know, soft skills are what a lot of employers look for, you know, for transitioning vets, and that's pretty much <laughs> what I have to market myself as, you know, so it is what it is. And it's been kind of a stressful venture thus far, and I'm still looking for employment. Thankfully, I, you know, did my taxes earlier this week, so, you know, once that comes in, I'll have a nice, cushion to uh, help me out until I gain employment, <laughs> at least for a while anyway, so we'll see. We'll see. And now let's uh, let's talk about school. So uh, school's been going pretty good for me, you know, despite all the, the craziness involved with uh, getting a job and all that kind of stuff, uh, school's been going pretty good for me for the most part. You know, I'm enrolled in Japanese and sociology, and those classes I've been doing pretty well in. Uh, Japanese I'm doing, doing extremely well in, and I get along with everybody in the class. They're all kind of at that, you know, level of humor, I guess. So they all kind of get my jokes, and, you know, I kind of help explain, you know, because I was in Japan, so I would talk about, you know, what I saw in Japan and just little, 
you know, in real life Japanisms and stuff like that. So I, you know, I find it very interesting. It helps keep keep my uh, my skills sharp, and I'm learning to read the read the uh, you know the katakana, hiragana, stuff like that. We haven't gotten to kanji yet, so you know, <laughs> baby steps, right? So I'm I'm learning to uh, get the hang of that. That part, as far as learning the writing, has been kind of shaky for me. Um, I'm still like <laughs> using the cheat sheet. You know, with the, all the hiragana characters, with, I, I should really stop doing that. But, you know, it's been kind of a shaky process as far as that goes. But, like, the speaking part, it's been going pretty good. And, like I said, I get along with the students. And the teacher, she's actually from Yokosuka. So, I would show her pictures of, you know, the local Kanagawa area. And, like, my train stop and all that kind of stuff. And she'd be like, oh, yeah, I know that place. You know, and it's just, it's really cool, man. So... And, you know, she's married to a vet as well, so she kind of understands the whole, you know, transitioning veteran thing. So, and she's throwing events for vets and stuff like that. So I think that's really cool of her to do that. So, yeah, I get along quite swimmingly with everybody in my Japanese class. Now, my social class, um, I'm not as involved with it, just because it's a much bigger class and stuff like that, so it's not as intimate and, and atmosphere as my Japanese class, but I still I still really really like the whole, uh, what we talk about in uh, sociology. It's very thought-provoking and stuff like that, even though it's a basic gen ed class and, you know, I, most people don't give two shits about it, really, but, you know, I find it very interesting and it kind of helps with um, thinking about new stuff to talk about in my videos and, you know, even when I was at Urbana, I took a, uh, a couple fine arts classes, like I uh, took some art classes and stuff like that, and it wasn't really relative towards my major, it's just a general elective, just kind of a throwaway class or whatever. But I really enjoyed those classes just because, you know, it, it got me thinking about stuff, and that's what I like about sociology as well, because it, it's a lot of note-taking, of course. I use my Surface tablet to uh, take notes rather than actually physically writing the notes because, you know, like I said, I don't like to physically write stuff. My handwriting is shit, to say the least, and it takes me forever to write stuff. And she goes through everything so fast that it's just like, it. it's just easier for me to just type everything out, you know, so it's a lot less time intense. And plus, I can transfer the notes, I don't have to worry about, oh shit, I spilled milk or tea or coffee or whatever on my notebook and all my notes are ruined. No. You know, unless I spill coffee on my tablet, you know, before I transferred everything over, you know, heaven forbid. Like I said, I've been enjoying it, you know, doing a lot of creative writing and stuff like that. It's kind of getting the uh, creative juices going again for not only writing, but also structuring videos a lot better. Because I noticed that when I take like creative writing classes and stuff like that, I noticed that my videos are a little bit better, a lot more structured, and I kind of, you know, know what to talk about, and, and you know, it's just kind of bam, 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 you know? At least that's, that's my, my take on it, so yeah. Now as far as my, uh, my other two classes, uh, accounting and uh, microeconomics, I'm not doing so good in those classes right now. I w I'm not failing yet. <laughs> I'm not doing so good in those classes, it's very mind-numbing. It's very much, you know, here are the notes, here are the notes. Okay, now we're gonna take a quiz on the stuff that we just talked about before you have time to process everything. And I'm just like, eh. I didn't have time to study or process any of the notes. I just wrote everything down. But hey, let's take a quiz on it. Why the hell not? <laughs> and then, you know, using a lot of the e-learning platforms, which I wasn't even, I wasn't a fan of it back then. And it's gotten better now, but still a lot of the systems that they use, I don't 100% agree with how they utilize certain things and it's just it's very eh, you know at least that's again that's my, that's just my take on it although I do have to say I am improving in microeconomics I'm starting to get the hang of things as far as you know what he's talking about and doing better on the assignments so things are going good in that front but uh, accounting I think I'm gonna have to get some uh, you have to get some tutor time uh, with accounting because I don't know like it's weird right because the actual concepts of what we're talking about in accounting seem pretty simple and you know I'm taking the notes taking the notes okay so for this you do this okay you know, easy right but once you're actually faced with like a problem or like you go take a quiz it's just like 
what are they talking about? Like, I'm just drawing blanks the whole time, and I just took my first uh, big quiz, my exam, uh, yesterday, actually, at the time of this recording, and uh, I don't know, I, I didn't feel super confident about it. I don't think I did very good. Probably definitely gonna have to seek out some uh, tutor time for accounting. Microeconomics, maybe, but like I said, I'm doing better with that class. So we'll see, but that's what's going on, you know, school-wise in my life. And uh, also, I've been taking a lot of pictures of my school, Western Michigan University. So if you follow me on Instagram, that's instagram.com slash uh, you'll see a lot of cool pictures of WMU and the surrounding areas and stuff like that. And I'm hoping to do more of those pictures so that way you guys can kind of see the campus and see how it changes throughout the seasons and stuff like that. And I think it's really cool, so, you know. <laughs> That's just me, though. And the last little bit of news that we're going to be talking about in this video, I know it's kind of long, <laughs> sorry, but uh, the last little bit we're going to be talking about here in this update video is how I'm dealing with stress. Like I said, I've been going through a lot of very stressful changes in my life, you know, not only getting out of the Navy, uh, moving back to America, uh, moving away from my hometown to start college, and just a lot of stuff's been going on in a very short amount of time for me, so it's, you know, it's going to take some time to 100% adjust to everything, and so there's that weird transitionary period where I'm just kind of like, I don't know what's going on, and, you know, all this stuff's coming at me all at once, and I'm just like, ah, just, what the fuck, man, you know, slow down. <laughs> But I've been looking at different ways on dealing with stress. I know everybody's saying exercise, exercise, run, run, you know, do jumping jacks, lift. You know, rah, rah, rah. But, you know, the weather's just not that good right now. Um, it's very cold. There's a lot of snow and ice, and I don't want to run and, like, slip and fall on my head or something like that because I'm not, not exactly the most graceful of human beings. As far as that kind of exercise, I'm going to wait until, you know, the weather warms up a little bit so that way... I don't slip and fall on my ass or my head or whatever and hurt myself. Um, and yes, I know I can go to the gym at Western or wherever and work out, but I, I have issues with going to the gym just because I don't have a lot of self-confidence. I know I, I kind of come across as very gregarious, very self-confident in my videos, but when I'm out and about with people, I'm very, you know, very introverted, very, you know, tense and just kind of like, don't look at me. Why is everybody looking at me? And stuff like that. So like when I go to the gym, I'm very, very self-conscious about myself. And um, I remember one time I went to the gym to, you know, work on legs and stuff like that. So I do like leg lifts and things like that. And of course, you know, like all the gyms, they seem to have mirrors everywhere. I don't know. I guess that's just to look at you know, your form, your technique, whatever. And that's okay, but... Like me, as long as I'm lifting, you know, it's whatever. I don't really care too much about it. Just as long as I'm doing it. And so I'm sitting there with my legs, you know, just doing like leg lifts. And like I look at myself in my workout clothes and I'm like, God, I look fucking disgusting. You know, it's like like a tube of toothpaste that's been filled up too much. And it's just, ugh, I just, you know, and then like look at my legs, I'm like, ah, oh, look how pasty white and gross your legs are, and just a lot of this negative, you know, self-depreciation sort of thoughts just creep into my head as I'm working out. And I know, you know, a lot of people are gonna be like, you know, just ignore the thoughts, you know, you're not there for them, and you're there for yourself, and you gotta work on yourself, and stuff like that, but just a lot of those personal mental issues crop up in my in my mind when I'm working out in a gym. It's just, and that's one of the reasons why I kind of avoid that scene. And you know, also laziness too, but you know, it's mostly just fear of being judged by everybody. Even though, in reality, I know that they don't give two shits and a fucking holler about me as long as I'm not yelling or making a scene or whatever. So as long as I'm not doing that, you know, they don't really give a shit what I'm doing. But just in my head, I get all these little, you know, <laughs> thoughts that brew and just kind of discourage me from working out and stuff like that. So that's why I prefer to be outside while I work out. That's why I like, you know, cycling, you know, getting on my bicycle and going places. And that, that's been my main source of cardio. But because I have a car and the weather has been 
kind of cold <laughs> in, up in, uh, in western Michigan. I haven't been biking nearly as much as I was in Yokosuka, because in Yokosuka I'd bike every day, you know, going back and forth to work and stuff like that. So I, I think that kind of helped give me a little bit of exercise. You know, it's not, you know, an intense 90 minute workout, but you know, it's something. Every little bit helps. But now that I'm not getting that, I think, you know, that's another thing that I have to get used to. And, you know, hopefully get back on the exercise wagon once the weather warms up and I can go and, you know, hope, ideally I want to start running again, uh, even though my joints are going to hate me for it. And I've, I've always had issues with, with running just because it, it affects my, my knees and my ankles. And, you know, you know, they would hurt. And I, I thought that I had like shin splints or something like that. And I'm, I may have them, I don't know. Um, but hopefully they've healed up by now. <laughs> I don't know, but I just like, you know, from the knee down, it always hurts when I run. Now when I bike, it's not so much the case because I'm, you know, you don't get that impact that you would when you run. It, it's a lot easier on my joints to bike. That's why I prefer to bicycle versus running. But I do want to get back into running because you do burn more calories and you don't have to go out as far and stuff like that. So um, once the weather warms up and there's less ice and crap everywhere, you know, I'm going to start running again. So there's that. And, uh, you know, in the meantime, I'm going to be working on doing, like, uh, some, I guess, meditating, even though it sounds super hippy-dippy. It's basically just breathing exercises. I'm not, like, you know, going, um, you know, doing stuff like that. It's just, I'm focusing a lot more on breathing exercises to help, you know, calm me down and to reduce stress. And I've noticed it's had a very significant effect on my stress levels, because I noticed that there's... There's weird times where even though I'm not feeling stressed and I'm not thinking about stressful things, like my body kind of goes into like the stress mode where I start just shaking uncontrollably, uncontrollably for some reason. And I'm like, why am I shaking? Why am I stressed out? What's going on? Even though like nothing triggered it, <laughs> nothing, you know, it was like, and I, I didn't get like a, an eviction notice or a bill that was really high. And I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do, dude? <laughs> You know, it's just like, it's usually before I go to bed, it's, it's really weird. Like, before I go to bed, you know, I just roll up in the covers and I'm just waiting to drift off to sleep and then all of a sudden I just, I start shaking uncontrollably and I'm like, what's going on? And I just, and like all these thoughts creep into my head as far as, you know, not being able to, you know, pass college, you know, just all these very morbid thoughts and I think that's just a result of stress and not enough exercise and all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm doing a lot of little things that's hopefully going to build up to being able to get back into exercising again, you know, lose some damn weight, I'm tired of this freshman 15, <laughs> among other pounds. But, you know, in addition to losing weight, it's, it's mostly just about having a, a healthy mental state. You know, I'm not doing it just to lose some weight, although that's nice too. But like I said, it's just mostly to, you know, help me have a clear mind. Once I get a job and can afford better food, <laughs> that's going to be another thing that's going to be changing soon because right now, like I said, money's kind of tight, so I'm eating some not so healthy things just so that way I can survive, basically, until I start getting some money again. So, you know, once that, you know, starts up, then I can start eating healthy again. And, you know, just basically, it's just I'm doing a lot of little small things to help build up to where I can live a healthier lifestyle than it was before like uh, you know I've been drinking water you know <laughs> mostly out of necessity because um, I can't afford um, other drinks like apple cider orange juice I, <laughs> I sure as hell can't afford liquor right now even though I do like it I do like to drink I'm not saying I'm completely giving up drinking but you know compared to my Japan days especially my Japan days where I would drink a lot very frequently and drank more than I probably should have actually you know, especially compared to that those times I've sobered up significantly um, I don't drink nearly as much as I did back then I think now well, I mean now it's kind of a bad example because you know I don't have a lot of you know money to spend on drinking and in Japan it's very cheap and very accessible 
to get something to, you know, tide you over, you know, alcohol-wise. You know, whereas here, it's very much like, I mean, the beer is pretty weak. You know, as far as, like, if you want to get drunk, you know, beer is a pretty terrible option for the most part. Unless you get, like, craft beer where the alcohol percentage is much higher, you know, or you go to a bar. But, again, you're paying for the... The craft beer, which is, you know, it's good. I'm not saying it's not, it's good, but you're definitely paying more than, you know, getting name brand stuff. And so I switched over to, you know, like liquor and stuff like that, you know, maybe mixing it with orange juice, apple juice, whatever mixing stuff I have, and just kind of getting by with that. And that's been doing fine, doing me fine. But like I said, you know, because I'm kind of tight on money, I can't afford those things right now. So just, you know, a little cause and effect. So I'm kind of eating healthier in that regard, you know, just because I can't afford, you know, less healthy stuff. You know, I'm going to be cutting back on my drinking, you know, once money starts rolling in, eating healthier stuff, you know, exercising, that kind of stuff. You know, that's kind of a long-term plan versus just, you know, I gotta lose the weight now. So anyway, that's what's been going on in my life. Um, this video is extremely long, and I do apologize for the extreme length, but if you've been sticking around for this long of the video, um, I gotta give you props. You the real MVP. And with that said, this is the Andy Son. Signing for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to this especially long update video and for watching my other stuff. And I hope you guys tune in when I move over to my The Andy San channel. I would suggest subscribing now so that way uh, once I start cranking out uh, videos and updates and all that kind of stuff, you know, you're not wondering, you know, why hasn't Andy uploaded anything in a while? That's weird. So that way at least, you know, <laughs> you got that covered so when I officially, you know, transition over to my The Andy San channel, you know, you're not missing out on anything. So anyway, thank you guys for tuning in to this video and my other stuff. Also want to thank you guys for liking with the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.